Ultrasound machines are with us since the 1960s. The initial machines were really big, bulky and uh, very poor resolution. There was also a significant uh, paucity of uh, good qualified sonologists who could actually do good quality ultrasounds. So in the 1970s, women were directed to do the blood test uh, called uh, MSAFP where in which uh, only those women in whom that blood report showed an abnormality, they were asked to go get the level 3 anomaly scan. So that's how women were screened out those whom required a little bit more expert uh, evaluation. So that overcame the lack of uh, machines and uh, expertise to uh, use them. So by the 1990s, the number of uh, machines available increased, the technology of the ultrasound machines improved, and we also had uh, increasing number of good quality sonologists. So most women in from 1990s onwards were able to get a good quality anomaly scan. But remember, even anomaly scans uh, do not always pick all anomalies, but they do a quite a good job. But even that fifth month scan was found to be lacking when it came to picking up chromosomal anomalies. And even if it were to pick it up, uh, it was rather too late to do anything about it. So obviously something had to be done. Science is fascinating. When the 1970s blood tests were analyzed, it was realized that by just adding two more blood parameters to it, we would uh, not only able to pick up uh, anomalies, but we would also able to pick up chromosomal abnormalities as well. And thus was born the triple marker. So the triple marker has now evolved into what we call as a double marker. And this double marker test is done between 11 and 14 weeks. And after 16 weeks, if a test is required, we have what is known as a quadruple marker. But the double marker, triple marker and quadruple marker on their own were not good enough to pick up all chromosomal abnormalities. So we needed something else. And that something else is what we call an NT scan a nuchal translucency scan and in that scan again done between 11 and 14 weeks we look at the back of the neck or the nape of the neck of the baby and measure its thickness we also look at the baby's nose and we look at the nasal bone in the nose and measure it and we also look at some other parameters around the heart and these parameters help us pick up uh, babies who may be having a chromosomal abnormality but again, on its own, the NT scan is not good enough. But when you combine the NT scan parameters, the double marker parameters and the maternal age, now we can pick up more than 95% of all babies who may be having Down syndrome or what is the commonest type of uh, chromosomal abnormality. But even this combined NT scan and double marker test is not a diagnostic test. It just helps us pick up those women who need another test to confirm the diagnosis. And that test is called an anamniocentesis. An amniocentesis is the diagnostic test to figure out whether the baby has got a chromosomal abnormality. This test basically involves sampling a little bit of the amniotic fluid which surrounds the baby. This amniotic fluid contains cells of the baby and these cells can be picked up and chromosomal testing can be done on it. So the availability of this NT scan and a double marker combined test helps us in two ways. One, the amniocentesis which is invasive and a bit risky uh, can be limited only to those few women who actually really need it. And two, because we do the NT scan and double market test in the 11th to 14th week, by the 15th week, we have an answer to the problem, maybe by 16th week. 
so we can offer the patient a solution if they so wish to take it. The beauty of advancing science is that by adding another blood parameter and another ultrasound parameter to the NT scan and to the double marker means now we have a way of picking up those women who may actually develop hypertension later on in the pregnancy. And if those reports come abnormal, then we can actually give you a tablet. And that tablet may prevent or at least postpone the onset of this hypertension. So this is known as the preeclampsia screening. And this preeclampsia screen is now very much embedded into the NT scan and the uh, double marker test. With the advance in uh, scan technology and uh, training of our sonologists, the 13-weeker scan can now even look out for um, congenital anomalies as well. Now, as of now, we still feel that the fifth month anomaly scan is important. But the third month scan can also pick up a lot of abnormalities. And therefore, it definitely assists the uh, fifth month anomaly scan. Maybe in the future, we may not even need to do a fifth month scan. Maybe the third month scan would be all that what we need to do. But as of now, we would like to do a fifth month anomaly scan. So the third month scan or the third month visit involves uh, a test called an NT scan, a blood test known as a double marker, a test for chromosomal abnormalities, a test to predict possible preeclampsia in the future, and also a cursory anomaly scan as well. So that's a lot of things for something which did not even exist around 20-25 years ago. And that's why science is so fascinating. But there are some things which I would like you to remember. Just an anomaly scan at 5 months is not good enough because it's not good enough to pick up chromosomal abnormalities. Just an NT scan alone is not good enough because it doesn't pick up all uh, chromosomal abnormalities. Just a double marker on its own, again, is not good enough. And even after you combine the double marker test and the NT scan, uh, it's not diagnostic. You need to do an amniocentesis to confirm. So do we have an alternative to amniocentesis, which is invasive? Well, there is a test known as NIPT. Now the NIPT or non-invasive prenatal testing is a blood sample taken from the mother. Now in all uh, pregnant women, there would be some amount of uh, the fetal cells or particles of the fetal cells floating around in your blood. So technology has improved such that we can actually isolate and amplify those uh, cell-free DNA particles and um, apply a chromosomal test on those or a genetic screen on that. And this is known as an IPT because it's non-invasive. Now, as of now, we still feel that amniocentesis is the gold standard. But NIPT is fast catching up. It's still rather expensive and not that easily available, but uh, probably it is the test of the future. Nevertheless, it's not going to replace the NT scan because in NT scan, we can look at uh, some um, anomalies and we can also predict potential PIH or preeclampsia in the future. But probably in another few years, NIPT would be probably standard. To wind up, please remember that once you get these tests done, it's important that you do not evaluate your reports. You need to show it to your doctor and your doctor needs to evaluate it. You need to remember that even your OBGYN often needs to consult with a fetal medicine specialist and sometimes even a genetic specialist to evaluate your reports. So please do not try to evaluate the reports yourself. And if your reports are normal, well, excellent. But if the reports are not normal, it doesn't mean 
that the baby is abnormal. We need to do a diagnostic test and you will be counseled on the pluses and minuses of those tests. Only after your doctor has evaluated the reports, you will be counseled on your best way forward. Okay, so I hope this helps. Bye.